I've showed this side spool holder in a previous video. Some people don't like it, it's not strong enough. Some people just want their spool to the back. So, I designed this one. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This is the side spool holder that I was referring to. This is actually a copy of the design that Creality ships with a lot of its printers. Now, you can take this and pivot it to the back if you want it on the back, but some claim that it's just not as strong. So I decided to make a new design. I decided to use the same mounting technique that I used for this tool holder that I showed in a previous video. It's got two rails that slide into the 4040 aluminum base of just about any Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone 3D printer. It's a real basic design that I created in Tinkercad. I started with just the block element and then I stretched it out and made it wider. That's the red portion. Then I put rounded end caps on it, which are the round roof pieces, just to make the ends of this nice and round and smooth. Then I imported the double rail piece, put it on top of this design, and set it to a 45 degree angle. For the spool holder, I used a cylinder block, stretched it out to the length I wanted, and then another one into a thin round cap. Then I used a hole block to cut the bottom of it, because I wanted this to print parallel to the bed so it would be stronger, and flat so I didn't have to use any supports. To connect these two, I'm going to use threads, and for that I went down to the shape generators, and then I found this little thread insert. Brought that in and then resized it. I made one a hole with a diameter of 12 and a thread scale of 1 and inserted that into the long arm. Then I made a duplicate and made the diameter slightly smaller at 10.86 and the thread scale at 0.94. I placed that smaller one on the end of the spool holder cylinder, but let me show you how they fit together. The threads of the spool holder have to be slightly smaller than the hole in the arm, otherwise there will be an interference they won't fit together. So you need this gap that I show here in the x-ray view. Once they're grouped together, I've got two pieces, the spool holder and then the arm with a threaded hole. So now let's export the .stl and import it into Cura. To test this out and to save plastic, I first used a hole block to cut two small pieces so I could export these and then print them out. And then all I did was do undo and put it back to the way it was. Here's the two test pieces printed at a 0.28 layer height. So now I can test the threads and make sure it screws together, which it did, and also that I got the position right for the rounded portion, so the spool sits on it the way I want. Everything looks good, so now I can print the full size units. I sized the arm to fit within an Ender 3 bed, and then the spool holder can fit next to it. I used my CHEP 0.28 profile with a 10% infill, I'm going to leave it there. Sliced it, it said 6 hours and 32 minutes. And in preview mode, this is what it should look like with a skirt going all the way around it. I didn't use any supports. I found those little rails that go into the 4040 aluminum do not need supports. Here's the finished print on my Ender 3 V2. It came out very nice, very smooth, and check this out. 6 hours and 25 minutes. Cura was almost spot on. To install it, just remove the cap off the back of your machine. Then slide the base onto the rail. Slide it in as far as you want, and then put the cap back on, and then you can screw in the spool holder. And it'll stop tight with the rounded part on top. Now you can take your spool of filament, feed it into the extruder, you're good to go. I'm sure some people will comment they don't like that angle, it's going to wear on the arm. This is a metal arm, it's probably less of an issue. But if you're worried about that, you can drill out the arm and put a piece of PTFE tubing in there, or there's other prints you can get to guide this in. It's really if you need the space, that's where this is an advantage. But I have been running this same model on my other V2 for a while, and I've seen no wear in the arm itself. So it works pretty well, and this thing is really solid. So I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's free. Download it. Try it out yourself. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.